Good evening. I'll call this meeting to order with the mission statement. We are a community of learners inspiring each student to explore, grow, and achieve. Roll call, please. Mr. Lohr? Here. Mr. Lynch? Here. Mrs. Meisner? Here. Mr. Sawyer? Here. Mr. Weekly? I am here. The Klamath Klum is absent and Storm Legally is absent. If you'll please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda this evening? I have, I have one on item 12, um, G2, uh, the dollar amount changed to $107,886. That's all I had. And in item number 14, my consent agenda, I've got several changes. In letter H, I've added an additional unpaid leave of absence. Letter J, uh, three additional summer bus drivers for um, for the summer intervention. Letter Q, a couple of small changes there in terms of the contract length, as well as one additional uh, classified contract. And then in letter GG, two additional teachers for the dyslexia training. And then two others, JJ, uh, approved custodial helpers, two folks for this summer intervention program. And letter KK, uh, four additional days of preschool uh, evaluation help to uh, Gabe Davis, or Gabe Taylor. Thank you. Moving on to approval of the agenda, are there any items to be removed? All right, seeing none, do I have a motion? I'll move. Second. Okay. Moved by John Lynch, seconded by Brandon Salyer, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the agenda as presented. Roll call, please. Mr. Salyer? Yes. Mr. Weekly? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. <coughs> We have reached our first opportunity for public participation this evening. We ask that you stand, state your first and last name, as well as your address, and keep your comments to three minutes. During this first opportunity to participate, the items that you bring up should pertain to items on the agenda. Is there anyone that would like to address the board? Anyone online, Ms. No, there is not. Thank you. All right, now we have the opportunity to recognize years of service here at Lakewood, um, which we are very blessed in the Lakewood School District to have teachers and staff that stay with us for a really long time and serve our community and our students. And so I would like to read their names and their years of service. 10 years of service, Terry McKenzie, Timothy Thrush, Melanie Lanning, Janessa Mayberry, Marcella Brownlee, Damon Lawyer, Susan Lacey, Carrie Seedor, Thomas Turner, and 20 years of service, Deborah Colley, Lauren Dominic, Valerie, Valerie Fallon, Jace Mayberry, Mindy Warble, Melissa Harkness, and Brenda Keller. Thank you for your service. <clears throat> And now we are to presentations, and it looks like we have lots of guests to help us with that this evening. So, Mrs. Henry, the floor is yours. All right. Good evening. Ms. Pars uh, Mrs. Parsley and I wanted to give a few updates of some things that have been happening at Hebron over the last month that we wanted to make our community aware of if they were not quite aware and also sort of celebrate some of those things. So, the first thing is we had a goodbye. <laughs> okay. There we go. Oh, awesome. Thank you. We had a goodbye to Hebron on May 3rd of 2023. Hundreds came to say goodbye to Hebron Elementary. Everyone loved looking through yearbooks and, um, and just through the years of everything. We had yearbooks clear from, I believe it was like 1930 up until 
currently. So that was really exciting um, to see everybody enjoying that opportunity. There was also a timeline of books published through the decades, and this was really neat. It went from the 1900s to 2020. And it was just interesting to see, you know, some of our favorite books that are still around today, like The Cat in the Hat from the 1950s, and also, you know, The Wizard of Oz was in the 1900s. Like, that was, it was just really cool to kind of reminisce back, and this is how long our building um, had been open. The halls were also lined with decades of doors. Um, we went again from the 1900s to 2020s. So it was really neat to see the staff and students use their creativity to sort of, dis sort of display all of those years going by. As we said, this, oh, okay. <laughs> um, and it was even neat, you know, to go back to the 80s and 90s and reminisce about all of that. And it was really neat to see all of our guests coming and actually really looking at the doors and taking the time to see that. So I think that that was a really nice addition. It was really neat to see people that hadn't seen each other in years all of a sudden recognize each other. And not only was it a celebration, but there were a lot of tears and it was, it was a very emotional evening. One of the things though that happened at that night and we're going to, you guys are gonna have an opportunity to see it if you didn't see it that evening, is we had two teachers that stepped up and actually said, we would love to have our students perform a reader's theater that night to also have the guests have something to enjoy and a memory to sort of leave Hebron by. So we are going to have that in just a moment after we recap a few other things. So the community may know, starting in February, when we were really getting down to the nitty gritty of realizing you know, we're moving and getting prepared for that, we realized that um, the playground situation over at Lakewood Elementary wasn't ideal for over 120 students at one time to be there. And so in order to prepare for that, Ms. Parsley and I, and Ms. Parsley honestly has done a ton with this, we hit the ground running with looking at grants and also reaching out to donors to try to help us with this mission. We had picked out three pieces um, of equipment that we thought you know, would start the playground. We didn't realize how much playground equipment was in the beginning. And we really thought that this may take us three or four years to accomplish, but we were going to try it. However, it did not take three or four years to accomplish. It basically took four months. Sure. And due to the amazing community and all the support that everyone has given us, we are proud to say that we have accomplished that goal. We are also now, we're working with um, our special needs students in the preschool to also fulfill the needs of those students as well. So it's really exciting now, you know, we're collaborating and really trying to make sure that we meet the needs of all of our students in Lakewood. So Ms. Parsley, I'm gonna turn it over to her to go over all of our, because she had a big hand in all of these. This is a big deal. Kind of a big deal. Very exciting. We are so thankful. We've already ordered our first two pieces due to the generosity of our community supporters and some of our grants. Um, we're hoping at the end of this month to be able to purchase our third piece. So I, I think it's important for us to acknowledge all of our donors. Um, I, I want to say Beth Moore, State Farm Agent, Brandon and Julie uh, Saylor, Salyer, I do apologize, uh, Lakewood Board Member, Brittany Meisner, Lakewood Board Member, Dave and Erica Lore, Lakewood board member, Jeremy Gosnow. The Gosnow Services is going to be digging, so they are donating their time um, at the, to help with our playground. Uh, we have Jonathan and Andrea Lynch, Lakewood board member, Harkness Family, community supporter, Licking Memorial Health Systems, business supporter, Matt Parsley and Justin Henry, Automation Wine Professionals, Missy Dutile, Hebron Teacher, Polling Family, Lakewood staff and community supporter, Ryan Hare, RCD Sales, Superior Building Services is a business supporter, Tim Phillips, community supporter. Um, for us to be able to reach our goal, these people really helped us out. So I think it's very important for us to express our gratitude because we're hoping that in August, our kids will have something to play on once everything gets put in. So very exciting. Thank you. We also had a Love for Kids heart sale as well as our PTO Hebron flower sale. So we really do want to thank our um, Hebron families and community members that also took part in those fundraisers. That was a huge help in addition to raising those funds, as well as we did receive a $10,000 Licking County Operational Roundup Grant. So it was a lot of 
um, work, but we are extremely proud of the, the community coming together and helping us with this mission. So thank you to everybody. We also have another huge thank you, um, and I hope that I would like the community to realize this, that not only did, and we are so appreciative of your generosity for the playground, but also your time of coming into our school. So it was very exciting to see all um, of five of our board members came to Hebron Elementary this year to participate in our reading literacy campaign. And we do, we wanted to look at each of you and thank you all so much for that. It means a lot to the kids and to our teachers and to us. And I just wanted the community to realize like that, that was really exciting and to see. We are having a celebration on Thursday on the playground for our students that another part, we had this whole snap word effort of our superhero snap words. And so if anyone would like to join us that day, the kids will be celebrating. It could be Wednesday. I It'll apologize. Wednesday. Uh, thank you. There's so much going on this week that it's getting a little lost and everything. So yes. So we want to, again, thank you for that. Now I would like to bring forth two of our amazing um, staff that came together to work with their students on this Reader's Theater performance. There's one more slide for our Reader's Theater. So um, we do have our Reader's Theater performance now. We're going to start with Ms. Sykes' class, or students. From our class, we have Nolan Miller is the bad C. We have Maya Wells, Maverick Weeks, Patty Schaller, Fiona Williams, and Braylon Williams. And they're going to present the bad seed. And the reason we chose the bad seed is because our class was in charge of um, kind of recapping the 2020s. And Jory John is an author from the 2020s. So this is the bad seed. I'm a bad seed. A, a bad seed. seed. Oh yeah, it's true. The other seeds would look at the bad seed and they would say, That seed is so bad. When they thought the bad seed was not listening, they would mumble. There goes a bad seed. But I can hear them. I have good hearing for a tree. Do you want to know how bad that seed is? Do you really want to know? Well... I never put things back where they belong. I'm late to everything, and I tell little jokes with no punchline. The bad seed continued on. I never wash my hands or feet. I lie about pointless stuff, and I cut in line every time. The bad seed stared at everybody. The bad seed glared at everybody. I didn't care. Then one day the bad seed made a big decision. 
The bad seed decided that it didn't want to be a bad seed anymore. I'm ready to be happy. It's hard to be good when you're so used to being bad. But I'm trying. I'm taking it one day at a time. Still forgot to listen. The bad seeds still turn up late. The bad seeds still talk to their babies and did all kinds of other bad stuff. But the bad seed also said thank you, please, and smiled. The bad seed held doors open for people, not always, but sometimes. And even though I still feel bad, I also feel kind of good. It's sort of a mix. All I can do is keep trying and thinking. Maybe I'm not such a bad seed after all. Thank you. 
and Corey get ready at the starting line. On your mark. Yes. Tori didn't cheat, Harry. He won fair and square. Slowly and steadily, he plodded on, never getting up. He passed the finish line first. Sorry, oh, you, but you lost this one. Let this be a lesson for us all. Slow and steady wins the race. Harry and Anna were so sad and defeated that Tori and the tortoise tried to cheer them up. Cheer up, Harry. It was only a race. I'm sure you will learn the lesson. students, thank you parents. You know, Reader's Theater, as a former English teacher, it's, it's very obviously very entertaining for all of us, but we know that obviously that builds fluency, it builds voice intonation, your, who's your audience, and so forth. So that is great. We loved it. So enjoy your last few days of school, everybody. See, I got my Hebron shirt on for you today. Wonderful. Yeah. And I'll ask you guys for donations. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Journey now. Don't stop. That was awesome. Incredibly impressive that little guy that memorized every one of the books. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. That was. I'm going to try to find my way home. So that's good. <laughs>
goodness. Well, I don't know how you follow that. Uh, that no, that's, it's it's going to be hard. You know, it's from be the sublime to the ridiculous. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's just keep, leave it at that. So I'm going to try to keep my comments short and try to really kind of go here. But I'm going to also tag team this with Mr. Walker. So um, what I had planned for tonight was this. Uh, typically at our main meeting, we kind of give an opportunity to kind of go over the five-year capital plan, and I'm going to have Mr. Walker do that in a few moments. I want to talk just a couple about a couple of contracts that are on the consent agenda for you. Um, obviously talk a little bit about our graduating class, our class of 2023. Great commencement yesterday. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the data there, and then I'll give you an update a little bit on decommissioning, consolidation, and so forth. So I'm going to hand this off. To Mr. Walker, again, I don't know how we're going to follow up. No, we couldn't do it though. <laughs> I have none of that. What he was talking about earlier about talking and reading and everything else. So, <laughs> uh, what a great job! What a, and a hard act to follow. I, I'm glad I was here tonight. Uh, the five-year capital plan. I started six months ago, and the first thing that was told to me was, "Hey, look at this and try to understand it." <laughs> So there's 10 categories into the five-year capital plan and maintenance and the, pro we, uh, you want to get to the next page? Yeah. So here's the first page with the uh, improvements for the five-year cost. We highlighted some of the stuff, the $150,000 for the air handlers. And I'll go back and, and just kind of explain the five-year capital plan is a guide that is used for the outgrowth for, outgrowth of our annual planning process that allows Lakewood local schools to be proactive. As building components reach the end of their life, become an operation unreliable and offer energy inefficient and require excess maintenance, time, and money. And we uh, picked four of the items in the capital plan that we're going to talk about. The air handlers, the AHU, uh, $150,000. Uh, imagine kind of like a radiator in your car or your air conditioner and the coils in there and it leaks and you constantly have to put refrigerant in there or antifreeze in there to keep it running and that's what we're coming into now. The uh, cooler has a leak in it. We'll be removing and installing a condenser and a chilled water coil. So hopefully with all this we'll try to do this over the summer. Uh, try to get uh, businesses come in, give quotes, and press on with that. The $900,000 UPCM and the VAVs. So the UPCM is a Universal Programmable Control Module. And the VAVs is called a uh, Variable Air Volume. So uh, this building here is 23 years old. The controls are 23 years old. So we want to upgrade the building automation system. So I want to try to highlight how old. I mean, we can always say this is 23 years old. 23 years ago, this was the elite of the controls. The legacy out of train was the elite. 23 years ago, this was the elite cell phone. <laughs> so it just kind of puts you in respect of uh, how many upgrades and how many different things have come up with your new cell phone. This was just a talk. 23 years ago, heating and cooling. The automations aren't talking to each other now. We're losing the ability to heat. We're losing the ability to cool. We're losing the ability to get the alerts that we're supposed to get if something goes wrong. And now we're doing it all manual. So this is going to be a big project in about uh, 2024. We're going to try to uh, get into that and try to do it the same way the middle school was uh, back with a company with a cooperative purchasing group. So we want to go with the, the next two, the PAC, the Performing Arts Center. If you went to the uh, play, the Music Man, okay, the lights were kind of dim. Well, that wasn't an accident. Those are halogen bulbs, and they burn out, and their life exist existence is very small. So we're going to go into LED lighting. We're going to change down to LED. It's going to be more cost and energy efficient. Transportation. Upgrading the radio system. We're going to go from analog system, which is this district's huge. There's drivers out there, 
east, northwest, other districts, they drive to different schools. And sometimes in the system now they have, they're not, a, you can maybe transmit and you're hearing just moggle, blah, 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 and you can't transmit back. So we're gonna go with the digitals. It's gonna give a longer range out, better communication, better for the, for the drivers, for safety, and the safety of the children that they're transporting. Uh, so just on a real short thing, with a five-year capital plan, it's used as a guide. It's, we're going to use it as a preventive maintenance plan. We're going to try to try to kind of nip these things in the butt before they get way out of hand, try to cost savings if we fix it now instead of later and try to save the district money. The five-year capital plan process is a continuous document allowing for administrators, board members, and community members to achieve a modernization of existing facilities to provide proper school system improvements for a safer school environment and improve technology for better planning and communication. And we'll open that up for any questions. I've got two. Um, and I, yesterday we had graduation in the uh, gymnasium. I got to say, I, knowing the issues that we have currently, I was very surprised with the conditions in there. I was expecting it to be a lot warmer than what it was. It did get uncomfortable towards the end when everybody is loaded in there. But overall, I thought that you guys did a great job with the conditions in that room for yesterday's event. So thank you for that. And then uh, one, my last question is, did you go to the Smithsonian to find that phone? <laughs> I had that phone in a drawer for a long time. That shows my age. And I thought I'd use that as a, a thing so tonight. So you can Clever. see how old really, everybody drives by and it's 23 years old. Uh, top of that too is, a lot of people don't realize that all your heating and cooling is hidden in the ceilings. You never see it. You don't know if it's working. You don't know. You can. You know when it's working and not working when you're hot and cold. So it's up there and and you don't see it. And and we've had a few board members to go around and and talk. And we talked to some uh, the facility committee on these projects to and uh, determine. We determine in a group what's the priority, what gets fixed first, but. This document is very educational. Uh, I think it's around probably most of the schools. I noticed it in the high school when I first came in uh, six months ago. So if you get an opportunity, it's available and you can read through it. Yeah, just a couple of comments. One, um, to the best of my knowledge, when I put together a list of things, you know, that I'm proud of that we've accomplished as a board, you know, and this was a carryover from the previous board as well, but to my knowledge, this didn't exist before. So the fact that we actually have this in place and have that roadmap, so to speak, to reference back to as a guide is is good. And I'm, I'm very <laughs> proud not only of the creation of that document, you know, with Glenna and Kyle Matthews and so on and so forth, um, but also that we're using it. So that's, that's very good. Um, and the second thing I just wanted to stress was, you know, with the HVAC in the high school is, you know, some people hear upgrade and they think that we're just moving on to the next fancier thing. But uh, with, the do with daughters in, in high school volleyball, you would freeze out of the gym during volleyball season and during basketball season, the heat would run you out, you know, just as easily. So it's, it is needed, you know, and like you said, there are issues. So this isn't just an up upgrade to bring us, you know, to a more modern system, but it's actually a serving a purpose as a, a climate, you know, controlled device that's past its useful time that, that desperately needs upgraded. So thank you. And my com only comment was going to be your first comment, how significant this document really is with planning, with budgeting, um, with ensuring that we are being good stewards to the tax dollars that we receive. So really, really proud of what the team has been able to do in accomplishing. And, and the fact that it was the first thing introduced to you shows exactly what we asked to happen is happening. So uh, thank you for your work. With yeah, us. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah, think I said you. it in the facilities meeting too, um, and I know you all weren't there, but regardless of the people in the chairs that change, the document stays the same, exactly. and, and that was the goal. So it's it's achieving that goal. Thanks. And at this time, I'd like to turn it back to uh, Dr. Glykoff. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, and I think we also heard from strategic planning that facilities and our maintaining of our facilities is important. So that's going to be a continued focus for us. 
A um, couple of contracts that are on the consent agenda, I want, just wanted to talk briefly about those. We've got the Kane Learning uh, contract for $33,000. That's for a year. Again, um, you know, Kane Learning, they've done some really good work with us over the last three years. Communication, social media, website, a lot of our, they really kind of coordinate a lot of that. And I, I really um, like the support they provide us. And it, it really is, it's flexible too on the different things that come up for us. So I'm hoping you consider that. And then we have uh, our annual Licking Memorial Health Services contract on there, a little bit bigger, $64,000 one-year contract. Again, that provides nursing and health tech services. So actually a couple of folks that we have here in our district. But I think, you know, you've heard us speak a lot in different mediums. Um, you know, the varied health needs of our students across our district are, are pretty wide. And so having the support services that we have with Licking Memorial um, is crucial, and so to have those folks, so I ask for those recommend, ask for those consideration on this contract or on this um, this board agenda. Got to take a moment just to celebrate the the class of 2023. Um, great commencement yesterday, um, an accomplished group of um, graduates, 134 graduates yesterday um, in there. But just the varied things that, that they accomplished during their time. I think a couple of things that even Mr. Cryer focused on yesterday. You know, nearly $2 million in scholarships and grants for, for secondary school. That is incredible. And then, you know, I was looking at this figure too. 422 college credits earned from CCP courses. So I was thinking about this a little bit today, and, and if you looked at that and you put it into Ohio State University dollars per credit hour, I think that comes out to nearly $350,000 in college costs. So, I mean, when people come up to you and they say, well, what's the value of a Lakewood education? There's a tangible number you can throw out there. It's right there. And so, you know, those are, those are figures that I think are significant. But when you look at the work side of that, because we've got many students who are going to go off into the workforce, six, 25 Ohio Means Jobs Readiness Seals, 53 industry credentials, Lean Six Sigma. Our students are getting a lot of great skills and credentials and, and competencies while they're here in high school that are going to set them up for success. And we, I believe, are the only school in Licking County that provides Lean Six Sigma within their high school. And, and when we talk about that with employers, they're like, wow, you're offering that. That's great. So, you know, I think there's some things that we really should be very, very proud of in terms of Lakewood that we can provide. I mean, there's a lot of great things here. We've got an involved group of kids, you know, letters, uh, academic letters. You know, I'm always amazed at the 13-year the club, the number of students that we have who matriculate from kindergarten all the way through. So I just think it's, it, you know, it's a perfect opportunity to, you know, just kind of sit back and kind of look at this class and say, you know, what, what a great group of kids. And we're fortunate to have had the opportunity to be in front of them. We've got two of them here who are running our tech tonight. I mean, so these are, these are very accomplished young men and young young women. So I'm just, you know, excited about them and excited about their futures. So let's talk a little bit about Hebron Elementary. I don't know why I did this like this, but so um, current work, what are we working on? Main building cleanup, you know, a lot of just, you know, painting, et cetera. Got some different things there. Obviously the kitchen is, is remodeling. Um, connecting corridor. That is in the process right now. I wanted to show a couple of pictures for you guys. Um, this is actually the outside of the connecting corridor from the south. So you can see it, and that is inside it. So really a lot of, over the last week or so, that connecting corridor has really come to um, fruition and really come into form. Um, so you know they're hoping that probably in the next week or so that will be completed so they can start getting the wiring that is really going to come over there. This is from within one of the modular classrooms. I mean, they're really in some of those classrooms to the point of detailing. 
meaning really couldn't have cleaned up, trying to make sure that it is pristine. We're getting to the point now, once this wiring gets in there, that we can start getting some of our own technology hooked up into there. So, um, you know, not all the classrooms look like this, but, you know, they're getting to a point now in there. So, a lot of landscaping, a lot of foundational work, but a lot, but many of the, the some of those moving parts is, is, uh, is, is happening. So, as we look at the summertime, you know, what's our to-dos? Again, we've talked about this. There's asphalt work for more parking. Probably looking at June um, for that. The, as I said just a moment ago, technology lines coming from the main building into the modular. We're going to actually do the big move of all the classrooms from Hebron over to Lakewood Elementary that week of June 19th. Um, again, think about it. We're moving the whole building from not only classrooms, but offices and, and clinic. And, and I actually think that we're going to start doing many of much of the LR media center, I should say, kind of library even later this week. So we're going to start some of that process, tearing down some of the shelves, getting those back up. Um, it, Mrs. Henry talked about playground install. Very excited. I mean, we've been so fortunate to be able to be in that position. I don't want to, you know, gloss much more of what she said, but but to be able to now come to see that come to fruition this summer is going to be great. And then signage. You know, they're really starting to look at, you know, what's the signage going to be out there for, you know, Lakewood Elementary. We're, we're planning some, some moderate, some signage for, you know, cars and traffic and so forth like that. But, you know, there's still much to do, as, uh, as Mr. Walker knows. He, he jumped into it, and he's doing a great job with it. So I appreciate his efforts. But we're excited. It's going to be a busy summer, but it's always a busy summer. But... Um, what uh, that kind of concludes my report for tonight. What what questions or anything do you have for me on all these these related items for this evening? I was just wondering, is there any opportunity for our students, or do we partner with the Kane Learning as far as like students that might be interested in that same kind of field, like an internship? Um, like an internship or? That's a good question. I would have to want to talk with them and make okay. sure. You know, we always want to be careful of you know how we you know, navigate the social media pieces, but absolutely. But I'll talk with them about that. Well, I'd like, I, I was thinking like website design and different things like that, if we could get some, maybe some of our students involved with yeah. those different types if of I things. If I recall correctly, prior to the pandemic, that she was doing some work with some students. So I, I don't know what's come of that since then, but I'm pretty sure she dabbled in that a little bit. Yeah. I shouldn't say she came in. Which, you know, is a whole other topic that I haven't even really spoken about is, you know, we're going through a whole website change. <laughs> and we're going to be doing that and launching that coming up in another month or so. So stay tuned on that one. Thanks for that segue. Anybody else? Thank you. All right. <laughs> is there anyone from LTA or LACE online? All right. We've had several committee meetings, so we'll go into updates and start with facilities committee, please. Uh, we met a while back. Uh, we had two meetings. We did the one already update, and then the latest one is, again, with Mr. Walker uh, going through and reviewing that five-year uh, forecast. And, uh, you know, to hit on the points that John mentioned, it, it's a guide. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a roadmap of sorts, and uh, it helps the district, it helps the board and uh, administration to see where we're going, and uh, you can look back and see what we've done. Uh, I think it's a it's a nice piece for the district, you know, for the the voters and the parents and constituents within the district to see uh, the communication, uh, to see the planning and uh, to see how things are handled fiscally responsibly. So uh, thank you for that. But, uh, you know, there's it, it, it was just a good meeting to review that five-year forecast. So uh, I really don't have any much more to add than what uh, Doug added earlier. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. And finance committee. Um, Go? Are you? Yeah, I can speak on it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So... 
we also reviewed the five-year capital plan. Um, we talked about some potential updates with some new real estate taxes we weren't expecting, uh, potentially coming through with some of the development in the area, which was great that we would be in a better position than the five-year forecast plan that we had a few months prior. And so that was some good news that we're going to stay at acceptable levels for our account balance longer than we originally thought. Not that we don't need to think long term about some more funding, but um, that was good news. We also talked about the uh, turf field on the football field that was inspected by a company and is in much better shape than I think we were all expecting, which is also good news, but will need to be replaced in the next five years, I believe. And we talked about a plan to start putting some funds away now to start planning for that, as well as uh, discussions with the athletic boosters on partnering to help with some of the replacement cost of that. Uh, and the last thing that um, really sticks out about the committee meeting was getting quotes from the insurance company, which I think we all received emails from Glenna around the raising cost of insurance, as well as the recommendation to raise our cybersecurity insurance to $1 million, which with my company that I work for, Dish Network, recently going through a cybersecurity attack and seeing the effects um, that has, um, it is very serious and something we all need to consider fully for sure. Uh, anything, Glenna, I missed with that from the meeting? Okay. Okay. And policy committee. We went over a bunch of policies. <laughs> I see a long list of these. Yeah, we, uh, we touched on uh, several different uh, policies that are before us tonight. Um, just basically some of them meeting the uh, you know, policies towards meeting the state performance indicators, college credit plus. I mean, the list goes on and on here. Um, we <clears throat> obviously discussed uh, the you know, adjusting our policy for animals with the uh, different opportunities that we've had on uh, within our district, and then also looked at volunteers and um, there's a, a lot of policies. Yeah, but I'd say those are the highlights. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you to all the committees for all of your hard work over the past few months. Now we will move on to the treasurer's report. Okay, uh, I'll review a few things here. Of course, we have three sets of minutes um, that I've included in your packet, as well as the financial report. I'm going to skip over the donations here for a second. We also have a new fund for um, the Dernberger donation for the STEM activities um, for $10,000. That's an 019 fund. We have amended certificate of estimated resources, amended appropriations, and then we also have two contracts on there, the Licking County ESC. That is um, the services that they will be providing us for the start of next school year. That has a cost of a little over 700000 And then Liberty Mutual Insurance. Um, this has been a long, long process to get, get to this, but um, we ended up staying with Liberty Mutual, even though we did have a quote from another company. We've been with Liberty Mutual. I think this is our third or fourth year for them. But this is at a 13.4% increase from prior year's premium. Um, as Mr. Salyer had also commented, we are increasing our cyber insurance um, coverage and that to a million dollars. And that was only an additional $648 to do that. So that is well worth the money to get that additional coverage on that. On here is also the um, a new rental agreement for World of Wonderment. It's a three-year agreement where they come in and do after-school child care for our students, and that's at $350 a month. Back to the donations, I wanted to uh, read down through the donations. We have a lot of very generous donations on the agenda here tonight. The first one is Whitechapel United Methodist Church, and that goes to the student accounts for food service. The second one is Apple Pie Consulting. This went to the Lakewood Middle School Principals Fund for uh, calculators. That was $1,000. Um, we have a $2,000 
donation from Lakewood Education Foundation that went to the high school principals fund for SEALs and diplomas. We have a $10,000 donation from David and Vivian Dernberger. Ms. Vivian's out here in our crowd tonight. Um, that is for district STEM activities, including a safe and educational experience before and during the total eclipse, solar eclipse, which is April 8, 2024. We have a $5,000 donation from Licky Memorial Hospital towards the playground, um, Lakewood Elementary Playground. A $100 donation from David and Erica Lohr for the um, playground equipment. A $115.36 donation from J uh, Brandon and Julie Salyer for the playground equipment. A $100 donation from Jonathan and Andrea Lynch for the playground equipment. A $1,000 donation from Brian and Melissa Harkness for the playground equipment. And a $3,000 donation from Superior Building Services for the playground equipment. And we still are receiving um, donations, you know, into the month of May, which those will be on the board agenda in June. So that's all I had for my consent agenda. agenda. Is there any questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion? My motion. Second. Moved by Brandon Salyer, seconded by Dave Lohr, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the treasurer's report and consent agenda items as presented. Roll call, please. Mr. Weekly? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Mr. Salyer? Yes. And now a presentation about the five-year forecast. Our current schedule, we have 4,000 to quit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did the reader click on one in there? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I'll take a few minutes to uh, night just to go over our updated forecast. Um, hold on one minute. We'll look at the forecast, talk about some of the different revenues, expenses. We'll do a uh, quick review of the ESSER fundings and where we stand there and then look at the Hebron decommissioning costs. So when looking at our forecast um, here in May, it's definitely trending better than what we had in November. Um, we had some additional revenues for tax revenues and interest income for this fiscal year that, that helped us as far as um, our revenue side of things. Our expenses are also down a little bit from what we were projecting in November. Now, when you look at line 6.01 on the forecast, which is the revenue surplus or deficit line, uh, the forecast still shows that we are projecting about a $200,000 deficit or revenue shortfall, um, but that's better than what we had in November, which I think was like 980,000. If you look on out through the line there, you can, continue to see that we are expecting revenue shortfalls um, throughout the remainder of the forecast. This slide here shows because we are expecting the revenue shortfalls that we have to pay our bills somehow, so we use our fund balance. And this yellow line here represents the fund balance, and you can see this, the declines in the fund balance out through 2027. Okay, so um, property taxes, that makes up 59% of our total revenues. Um, in the state of Ohio, the county auditor um, sets appraisals and has valuation increases on a set schedule. Every six years, the county will go through a reappraisal of the different values on people's property, and every three years, they'll have a triennial update. Well, you remember back in 2020, we had our triennial update and we had more than a 20% increase in property valuations, which was totally really unheard of. Um, it was very high. And I don't really know what to expect for 2023 because 2023 is a reappraisal year for Licking County. 
But if we go back up to this 2022 valuation, on average, since that is not a reappraisal year or a triennial update year, we would see increases in the 2 to 3% range. The 2022 valuations increased 4.1%, which generated an additional $98,000 in revenue for us this fiscal year. In 2023, when I did the November forecast, I estimated an average increase in value, valuations of 7.5%. In talking with other treasurers here in Lickey, um, really in central Ohio, and then the county auditor's office, that's going to be really low. They're expecting double digit increases again for the, the, the reappraisal year. So I've increased my um, estimate to 10%. That's still probably low, but I don't want to overestimate. And when we do the forecast update in November, we should be able to talk to the county auditor at that time. They should pretty much have all of their uh, reappraisal work done, and we should be able to have a better estimate on what kind of increase that we will see um, for 2023. But just by changing the um, increase in the 2023 valuations from, from a 7.5% to 10%, that generated an additional $82,000 for us for next year. Um, in fiscal year 23, we also had a one-time settlement of about $348,000 um, from a business. They, they uh, paid us. I think this happened last July. But so that was in my plan for November, the November forecast as well. This just is a slide out of our five-year forecast that shows district property valuations by tax year from 2016 through 2026. And you can see the steady increase in the values. Um, public utility taxes. Now, that represents only 8% of our total revenues. And on a year-to-year -year basis, we normally only have a 4% increase in values there. But in 2022, the values increased 16.5%. That was huge. And that um, generated additional revenues of about 112000 for this fiscal year. But for the remaining forecasted years, I left it at 4% increase because I don't expect that that will happen again. But who, who knows? You kind of wonder, you know, how long these increases like this are going to continue. The other place where we saw additional revenues was interest income. Our interest income is up about 300000 from where it was last year with the climbing interest rates. Um, and it's up an additional 150000 from what I had been projected in November. On the expense side, um, I didn't really change too much. I did reduce some expenditures under salaries and related benefits and then also supplies. But then in fiscal year 25 or 24, I increased capital outlay for the anticipated replacement of the HVAC controls here at the high school. Here is just a, a chart out of um, the five-year forecast tool that shows the, how much is spent on capital outlay from every year from 2018 through 2027. You can just see that the amount varies each year depending on what project that we may have. In November, I talked about our ESSER dollars, which is the COVID-19 money that the federal um, government awarded school districts. And we were awarded about $3.5 in total. I just wanted to provide a status of that. To date, we've spent $3,065,000 with a remaining to spend of $435,000. Our cutoff to spend is $6,300 by September of 2023, which that's pretty much al already gone. And then September of 2024, we need to spend the balance, which is about $429,000. Now that's where our summer school program money will come out of. Why do I talk about ESSERS when I'm talking about the five-year forecast? You know, over the past couple of years, the expenses that were allowable under ESSERS, we've paid for them out of ESSERS. 
and when that money is gone, those expenses will be coming back to the general fund. So in fiscal year 25, um, we've added back about $275,000 in additional expenditures each year. The decommissioning of Hebron costs, um, to date we've spent about $2,272,000. That includes the pur purchase of the modulars at $1.3 million, which is being paid for out of the general fund. The remaining expenditures, about $972,000. We have been able to use some additional funds. Uh, food service fund, $81,583. Sheep is paying for all the new equipment in the Lakewood Elementary School. Capital Projects Fund, 71000 that paid for the um, connecting corridor between JIS and the Annex. ESSER funds, we've uh, purchased a lot of technology equipment, the new equipment that's at JIS and Lakewood Elementary, as well as um, updating the JIS HVAC controls. And then the general fund has paid the balance so the general fund has paid approximately two million of that total cost that we have there. And that's all I have. Is there any questions? Uh, for that. And just remind me again, the ESSER funds could not support the needed HVAC uh, replacement over here? No. So with the balance that we have left is part of the ESSER 3 money, the ARP ESSER. And with that money, they put a set aside on there. 20% had to be used for instructional purposes. Well, because we used $2 million of that for the middle school HVAC, pretty much the remaining balance that we have has to be used for instructional purposes. C-Tech and instructed them how to wire. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I think that'd be kind of risky. <laughs> Any other questions? Just making that make sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I do have one last. Okay. Um, my personal opinion, and I'm not in finances or anything, but I think the bubble's going to burst eventually. We've seen this, you know, they're expected double digit percentage yes. increases and everything. Are we. Are we planning on, okay, going with the 10% and anything else above that is icing on the cake and we're setting it aside into a, you know, or does that go to general funds, whatever we, or would we, hey, look, we're planning on this, a downturn, because I don't think it's going to stay up like that. Maybe the utility taxes might stay up, mm -hmm. but I think some of that income stuff, you know, the housing value. Is there any plans or would we, you know? So when I model this out, I base the increases on a year by year basis. So because this software that we use is very technical. So when I modeled 10% for the tw base to use for the 2023 values, that's 10% for that year. And then I've dropped my increases down for years subsequent to that. What I don't want to happen, I'd rather be sitting here in May and we have 200,000 additional dollars in revenues because the values increased more than overestimating it in November and be sitting here in, in May with $200,000 less. That's the, the scary part. And hopefully, you know, all I can do is, is base it on historical trends and what they're telling me now. And, and I know it's going to end, but when the big double digit increases are going in, I just don't know when. It's like enrollment. We know it's going to turn around at some point, but we don't know when. Yeah. Anything else? I have a second. I'll second. Moved by Brittany Meisner, seconded by John Lynch, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the five-year forecast and related assumptions as presented. Roll call, please. Sorry, I got ahead of myself for you. <laughs> Can you give me the uh, yep. motion? Yep, it was myself and then John Lynch. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Lohr. Yes. Mr. Lynch. Yes. 
Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Mr. Salyer? Yes. Mr. Weekly? Yes. All right, now superintendent's report. Thank you, Mrs. Meisner. Um, I've got several things here. First, I want to just talk about our SRO report for the month. Um, our school resource officers obviously make their ways into the classrooms quite a bit in here in the high school. They were in Mr. Jewett's street law class. Um, talked about a lot of the different civil issues from custodial rights, civil protection orders, divorce proceedings, civil standbys, evictions, property disputes. Um, then even later on in the month, they worked with some of our students on appropriate interactions with law enforcement, you know, and kind of talking a little bit about that, you know, and for, you know, hopefully our students don't have that, but we know invariably there's going to be some, whether it's, you know, on the street or with cars and so forth. So talked a lot with students about, you know, how to, how to, you know, respond in terms of those reactions. Uh, Deputy Harvey was uh, helpful in terms of a Sir Reads a Lot. He was he was with my friend Sir Reads a Lot, and uh, he videotaped uh, as a guest reader for that as well. So we enjoyed that. But you know they've been really busy. Um, you know the end of the year is a busy time for them, and they really try to make their way around to the different schools, get to some of the field day activities, and being out there with our classrooms or or classes, when, especially when they're outside, because at this time of year a lot of them like to go out like to go maybe for an extra recess or so forth. So that's where having our school resource officers is, is cr really crucial. Um, I gave a graduation recap, so I'm not really going to you know, go into that again. But again, congratulations to all our grads. I think it's exciting right now, even though we're winding down with the school year, we still do have some of our student athletes uh, performing. We've got our district track meet that's coming up this week, so we have a few members of the track and field team who are still competing in that, and good luck to them. And then on a very exciting note for us here in terms of our baseball team, they had a big win last week in the sectional against Granville, and because of the way that it all fell, they now have a home district semifinal game tomorrow night here at Don and Mary Ann Thorpe Field. So that's exciting, having a home game here for the district semi. So um, that's at 5 o'clock tomorrow. The weather is supposed to be gorgeous. So it should be uh, a great opportunity. So let me go through the consent agenda. And please be patient, because it's a big agenda for this evening. Um, have you approved the graduates for class of 2023? And I know all of you were there yesterday enjoying that. Um, letter C and D are related to a new uh, middle school secretary, employment of her for the remainder of this year, and then giving her some additional days to help with onboarding and end of year procedures and so forth. You're actually also later on in the agenda at AA are going to approve her for a contract for next year subsequently as well. Um, substitutes for this year. Uh, letter F and letter G kind of go together. Um, quiz bowl advisors, kind of sorting that out for the year. We had one uh, person who resigned, and then that would be um, divided amongst the two other remaining advisors there in, in G. In letter H, you have a few different leave of absences that uh, staff members have requested. Uh, letter I. That is for our technical interns, many of our student interns, like the uh, folks who are helping us this evening. They do a lot of great work during the summertime, so approving them for some summer hours. Letter J, K, L, M, down to N. Those are uh, resolutions based on our summer program. So different people we're trying to approve for the summer program, some of those folks will be paid for from ESSER dollars that, you know, Mrs. Place did just mention. Uh, letters O and P, therefore, some of the work that may be done curricularly during the summertime, whether it's with our ELA committee, our English language arts, or perhaps extended school year services, we might have students with uh, an IEP need that per their IEP. Uh, letter Q. 
that is for classified contracts now for next year. So you're going to see a number of contracts of, of personnel, um, varied lengths for, um, for next school year. And those are all based on the LACE contract, the length of those. Uh, then in letter R is be, uh, Mrs. Lazier is there eligible and recommended for a classified continuing contract because of the length of time she has been working with the district in that capacity. Uh, letter S, we transition to our certified contract renewals. That's our teachers typically. And there's a number of teachers um, for new contracts based on, again, their principal recommendations or what they're eligible of service for in, in Lakewood. Letter T, we have two uh, teachers who we are recommending for a continuing contract per their service and degree attainment. So the principals have recommended them and I affirm those recommendations. Uh, letters U, V, and W, varied, exempt, and um, in co contracts from, from our tech support, our uh, school psychologist, who is now going to be here. Um, he just finished up his first year and now has a two-year contract, and then also my secretary and EMIS coordinator, Mrs. Lacey. Uh, letters X and Y, those are the two contracts that I mentioned in my report, the Kane Learning as well as the Licking Memorial Health Services. Letter Z, that is a revised job description for the Technology Media Integration Specialist. We have posted that position for Hebron Elementary. What we want to do is make that into a certified position, well, that person will then also be covering that library special or practical art, if you will. But because of the proximity of the two schools, Lakewood Elementary and, Hebrew, and, and Jackson Intermediate next year, that person will also be providing some support to the library tech in Jackson. And they might swap from time to time. So making that a little more curricular in the subsequent year. Um, letter AA, I've I talked a little bit about already. Double uh, B is the employment of certified staff. These are new staff members for uh, to Lakewood, so they would all be receiving one-year contracts. Again, these are folks who are replacing some of our retiring or replacing current staff in there. So we're excited to welcome them to our uh, to the Lancer family here. Uh, double C is an employment class of staff for, for next year. Someone who is, was the district cashier is going to be one of the cashiers in one of the other buildings. Uh, letter DD will be a non-supplemental co contract um, for Jackson Spelling Bee Advisor. Letter EE is classified subs for next year. Letter FF. I um, want to stop for a moment here. This is for Rick Signs. About a year and a half ago, two years ago, we created that foreman position. Really, if you think about all the work that was on, you know, Mr. Walker as well as his predecessor, Mr. Mr. Matthews, we created that to, you know, provide some support for the day-to-day -day operations. And so that was kind of a three-year plan that we had for that. So Mr. Signs has, has done that, and he's going to do it for this next year. After this next year, this, this particular supplemental will sunset, though. But I just want to take a moment just to say, you know, thanks to Mr. Sines for his work in that. He's done great work with that, he, especially as we now have been doing a lot of the transition. You know, Mr. Walker's been a part of those transition meetings, those consolidation meetings, and Mr. Sines really kind of joins as well as too because because his critical, um, you know, part in that. So, uh, letter GG. This is for teachers to complete some of the dyslexia training modules that are mandated for our teachers. And so some of the teachers are going to be working on those during the summertime. Letter HH is some extended time for our dean of students as we have our outgoing dean of students and then our incoming dean of students. So a couple of, couple of uh, some extra days there. Uh, letter II is some coaching supplemental contracts uh, for next uh, fall predominantly you're going to see a lot of the football coaches the volleyball coaches on there some of the soccer coaches 
You'll also see our boys basketball coach, our varsity coach will be is on there um, because during the summertime, typically they start beginning some of their their work with those uh, those students or the student athletes. Letter JJ, which I added this evening, custodial helpers for the summer intervention program. Again, that will be um, paid for through ESSERS. And the letter KK is for school psychologist Gabe Taylor, who obviously we're, we're, I'm asking for a, an additional two years. He's also working with some of our evaluations for some of our students during the summertime. And I've asked some additional time for him because our other psychologist right now is out on FMLA. So Gabe is going to have to kind of pick up some of those additional evaluations. So that is the consent agenda for this evening. Questions? Definitely a May consent agenda. It is a May consent agenda. <laughs> Very true. Any questions or comments for Dr. Peikoff? I do appreciate having some of those coaching contracts out ahead of the season before they start interacting with that's something we've brought up in the past, and I'm glad to see that that's uh, being taken care of. We're going to do that to the best of our ability. Yeah. To try to get it out. Understandably, there. some things, you know, are what they are, but uh, it's nice seeing some of these ahead of the season. Okay. Well, I will make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Moved by Brittany Meisner, seconded by Dave Lord, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the superintendent's routine business items as presented. Roll call, please. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Mr. Sawyer? Yes. Mr. Weekly? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Now we have several contracts to be considered. Do you want to walk us through those, Dr. Lycock? Yeah, I think I'll just make a general statement if you don't mind, Mrs. Meisner. Um, you know, the following contracts here, uh, I think you have eight of them of administrators. You know, for I, I got to be honest, I've, we've got some great administrators in our district. Um, and even in my three years here, I've hired quite a few. Um, and, and so they've done some really good work. What you'll see tonight are eight recommendations for uh, extending contracts to some of our existing, uh, our current uh, administrators. These administrators have been either evaluated by myself, Mrs. Pickering, or Mr. Cryer. And all of us have recommend, you know, feel that these folks are warranted and in, in of a particular contract as you see in front of you. Um, again, they do great work. We wouldn't be where we are without their their leadership and their different capacities. So, I ask that you consider all of these, you know, as you go through them tonight. Any questions or comments before we work through the list? All right. The first one for consideration is Bill Jones, two-year contract as Director of Technology and Media Services. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second? Second. Moved by Dave Lohr, seconded by Brandon Sawyer, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the contract for Bill Jones. Roll call, please. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Mr. Sawyer? Yes. Mr. Weekly? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. The next one is for Brian Carling, two-year contract, Director of Transportation. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Moved by Jeremy Weekly, seconded by Brandon Salyer, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the contract for Brian Carling. Roll call, please. Mr. Salyer? Yes. Mr. Weekly? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Next one is to approve the renewal of the supervisory personnel, Doug Walker, two-year contract as Director of Facilities and Maintenance. I will make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Moved by Brittany Meisner, seconded by Jeremy Weekly, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the contract for Doug Walker. Roll call, please. Mr. Weekly? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Mr. Salyer? Yes. Now we have the two-year contract for Richard Cooper, high school assistant principal. Do I have a motion? Motion. I'll second. Moved by Jeremy Weekly, seconded by Brandon Salyer, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the contract for Richard Cooper. Roll call, please. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Mr. Salyer? Yes. Mr. Weekly? Yes. 
Jessica Quorum for the two year contract as middle school principal. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second? I'll second. Moved by Dave Lohr, second by John Lynch, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the contract for Jessica Quorum. Roll call, please. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Mr. Sawyer? Yes. Mr. Weekly? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Now we have the contract for Belinda Homan for three year contract as director of special programs. I will make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Moved by Brittany Meisner, seconded by Brandon Salyer, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the contract for Belinda Homan. Roll call, please. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Mr. Salyer? Yes. Mr. Weekly? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Now we have Kevin Cryer as high school principal, two year contract. Do I have a motion? I'll move. And a second? Second. Moved by John Lynch, seconded by Brandon Salyer, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the contract for Kevin Cryer. Roll call, please. Mr. Salyer? Yes. Mr. Weekly? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Lastly, we have the contract for Jason Lee, one year contract as our athletic director. Do I have a motion? I'll move. I'll second. Moved by John Lynch, seconded by Brandon Salyer, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the contract for Jason Lee. Roll call, please. Mr. Weekly? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Mr. Salyer? Yes. All right, thank you. And now we have that long list of first read of policies that Mr. Weekly had referenced. Are there any other comments um, or questions in regards to this first read on the policies? All right, seeing none, I will make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Moved by Brittany Meisner, seconded by Dave Lord, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve the first read of board policies. Roll call, please. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Mr. Salyer? Yes. Mr. Weekly? Yes. All right, we have reached, reached board discussion and comments. Mr. Weekly, you want to kick us off? Yep. I have uh, quite a few comments, I guess. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the Durham Burgers for your generous donation. Uh, beyond this, everything that you guys do for the district um, this past year, I really got to see it riding in a uh, band equipment vehicle with you. So all the all the things you do with our fine arts program and now with our STEM, it's, it's great. Thank you. Um, also want to talk about graduation yesterday. Um, there's way too many people to talk about, like between Mr. Cryer, the uh, staff that, that, that set up the custodians for cleanup, um, it was really special. I didn't get to partake last year in graduation, and this year, like, it was, it was very, it was a special moment. So um, I appreciate everything that went into that. Our, even afterwards, the, uh, our resource officers out directing traffic at 40, I mean, it was a, a you know all hands on deck yeah definitely all hands on deck for that one so thank you for that uh mr walker thank you for your presentation tonight and uh congratulations on your continued contract here with lakewood um i want to um again with the graduation i think we did this last year i think you guys had the little lancers and the graduation yes last year i mean it goes hand in hand mm -hmm. i think that you know, that's our, our future, and uh, they, they did a phenomenal job. I was very impressed with our, our little answers to, tonight. So, and then, um, you know, I think that, I absolutely think 100% we made the right move by allowing the teachers to partake in giving the diplomas. I, I don't know if, if everybody could see it, but just the look in those students' eyes when the teacher that they selected was I think Brittany even said way better than them giving being given from someone that they have no clue. Um, so I think that that was absolutely the right move. I even read comments from teachers on Facebook afterwards how much it meant to them to be a part of that. Um, and and I think that's really special. So I I think we definitely need to keep we we kicked it out of the park there with that one. So um, and then uh, you know wrapping the the, the year up here. So it's been a great year. I know the, the work doesn't stop. Uh, it's just 
it's just getting busy, I think, for, for a lot of the behind the scenes people. Um, and then also, uh, to the eighth graders, have fun on your DC trip. They leave uh, bright and early, so um, that's all I got. Um, yes, uh, Miss Vivian, thank you for, your name comes up several times, your family, and just thank you for that, your contribution to the district. And I believe you were a past board member as well, correct? Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Uh, the dedication to the district is uh, appreciated. Um, like, you know, touching on what Mr. Weekly said with the uh, graduation yesterday, having the, uh, the chosen teachers and staff do that, uh, especially, you know, some of those kids remembering their middle school and intermediate and elementary teachers, you know, that's, it just shows the impact that they have on their lives uh, coming through the district. So that was definitely a great decision um, doing that. Um, congratulations to our track and field athletes that are continuing on um, and good luck to our baseball team tomorrow night. Uh, one thing I noticed tonight, there's quite a bit of two and five year contracts. Um, and I just want to say congratulations to those uh, that are continuing to stay in the district, uh, building that relationship. I think that goes uh, hand in hand with the transparency that the board uh, is wanting to project, the communication, the trust uh, that overall we're wanting to build within the district. Um, and when you get those two and five year contracts, they add up to the 10 years of service and the 20 years of service. And if you look down through that list, there's quite a few. And, uh, you know, just looking back at the recent uh, celebrations we've had of retirements, you know, through the district. So um, the building on those two and five year uh, contracts with the staff and teachers, just thank you uh, for your commitment to the district. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, and then going back, the last thing, um, Mr. Cryer and what they did with uh, Chase Townsend. And I'm going to tear up because it was a emotional uh, for Chase and for Maddie. Uh, that was very appropriate. Um, you know, God bless both of you and uh, Godspeed. And uh, may you continue to get better. And uh, we just... Uh, I appreciated that moment during that graduation. That was very appropriate, and uh, you know, just I, I don't know what else to say about that, but uh, very very appropriate. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll also say thank you, Miss Vivian, for all that you do for the Lakewood School District. I see your name up here all the time, and you're usually sitting up there as well. So that's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Mrs. Henry and Mrs. Parsley for coming and discussing the playground and everything that they had going on there and the hard work Mrs. Parsley's put into that and that's fantastic. I'm excited for the playground equipment. Uh, thanks to Mrs. Sykes' class and Mrs. Schmidt's class for coming uh, and presenting today. That was awesome to see. Uh, Nolan's on my baseball team and so that was awesome. I'm going to have to give him a big round of applause at practice tomorrow. So uh, that was very cool. Uh, Mr. Walker, thanks for all that you do and the presentation. That was great. I appreciated that. Uh, yesterday was my first time at a Lakewood graduation, and I was very impressed. I thought it was very well ran. The moments that were had with Chase and um, just others, it was just very powerful, and it was great. And yes, to see the teachers handing out diplomas is way better than me, uh, for sure, because of the connections they had there, which was Amazing. So kudos to everybody involved. I thought that that was a great day. Um, and then, yes, I uh, would encourage everyone to get tickets, go cheer on the baseball team here at home tomorrow at 5, and also congrats to the track and field athletes as well. And that's it. I don't know that there's anything left, I know, right? to be honest. Um, you have to do what I do, repeat it. Th thank you for the donations, as always. It's much appreciated. Um, I wanted to congratulate Hebron on their fundraiser for the playground equipment. Best of luck to the baseball team, of course, and the track and field athletes that will continue um, as they move on to regionals, I believe it is. Um, I wanted to congratulate both the retirees and the individuals for their milestone anniversaries. You know, it, it just speaks to the longevity in the district, and, and I appreciate that. 
Um, and then the last thing I wanted to do was just thank the Hebron Police Department you know, for their presence at Hebron as we leave Hebron. Um, Mayor Layton and then before him, Mayor McFarland, you know, to have the Hebron Police and, and just have a presence and, and be there, you know, every now and again to keep an eye on that building and just make sure that everything is going according to plan um, over the last few years, you know, has been very much appreciated as we leave Hebron. So thank you for that. And that's all I have. Several comments. Um, of course, we have to thank the Dernbergers. I often like to say that uh, I'll be a Lancer for a lifetime, but I, I really think that you and your family are the example of that and what you contribute to this district. So thank you so much. And the fact that you take the time to spend these evenings with us mm -hmm. <laughs> and you find it interesting enough, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, yes, congrats to all that have earned the 10 year, 20 year service. Um, I've been on the school board about five years now and so every year we get the opportunity to recognize those people and uh, when we read through the list, some of those I know very well from my personal experiences at Lakewood and others I don't. And that also speaks volumes about how long that they've been here and I don't even recognize their names or have much interaction with them. But the fact that they have dedicated decades to our district um, is just really phenomenal and we truly, truly appreciate all of the time that they, they give us. Uh, graduations, I'm echoing the same comments. The teacher participation was wonderful. Congratulations to all of our graduates. Um, I think I was telling one of the fellow board members, I'm not sure who, how much I've enjoyed the graphics that we're sharing on social media with the accomplishments of our graduates because even though we get to see those things at these meetings, it really helps remind us of how accomplished our students are and how hard they're working. Um, you know, seeing the graduates walk up and you know they're you can tell that they're nervous who wouldn't be but then when they look over and they see their kindergarten teacher or that person that's made an impact in their life and the big smile that was on their face it was like yep nope i never want to hand out another diploma i hope that every single year they find someone that meant that much to them that they want to to participate and do that so um the goodbye to hebron event I absolutely loved it. Um, it was so well done. So um, hats off to Miss Henry, Mrs. Henry and her team. Um, it was so cool to see that the best part was actually the retired teachers finding each other in the hallway and embracing each other and being so excited and, and just like you could hear the squeals come out of them sometimes and it was just really awesome and helped put into perspective how much that building uh, has, has played into some people's lives. Um, tonight's presentation, amazing. That's my favorite part about being a school board member is being able to see those things uh, and seeing them pull their, pour their little hearts into the presentations that they provide us. So. Can you clarify, was it Doug's or the little oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, you did great too, but they're the ones that stole the show. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you know, uh, in addition to the Dernberger, seeing uh, community partners and businesses like LMH and um, Apple Pie Consulting, which is a graduate of Lakewood that's brought her business back here to, to Hebron um, and donating to something like calculators that means a lot to her. You know, she's passionate about math, and so I love the connection. Um, I know a lot of us here, we've been at the middle school band concert that happened last week. There was Music Man, I think, the week before that. It's been a very, very busy May, um, but all of the kids did an amazing job. And then, of course, congrats to the track and field uh, and the baseball team, and good luck as they compete. I think that concludes my comments. And student reps are out tonight. And now public participation. Again, first and last name, address. Is there anyone online? There is not. All right. Future board meetings, June 14th here at the high school, live streamed and in person. Do I have a motion, motion. to adjourn? Second. Moved by Dave Lohr, seconded by Brandon Salyer, that the Lakewood Local School District Board of Education approve adjournment at 8.06.7 p.m. Changed as soon as I said it. Roll call, please. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Meisner? Yes. Mr. Salyer? Yes. Mr. Weekly? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Right. Have a good evening.